Hello and welcome to Dealing with Materials Data course. We have come a long way in uh, learning about hypothesis testing. All the while we have worked with the case in which we have considered uh, normal distribution as the population distribution. So, if we review it quickly what we have seen is we have tested the null hypothesis if the population is normal with mean mu and variance sigma square and then we have tested the hypothesis that mu is equal to some given value mu naught against the three alternative the two sided alternative that mu is not equal to mu naught and the other two are mu is greater than mu naught or mu is less than mu naught. In both the cases we found that if the population variance sigma square is known then it uh, reduces down to testing a hypothesis using a test statistic z which is a standard normal variate. It is a normal uh, variate with mean 0 and variance 1. In case we assume that sigma square is unknown then it uh, reduces to a test statistic which is a student's t uh, distribution statistic and uh, it is distributed as student's t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. The advantage of the two is that uh, uh, none of the two statistics distribution under H0 when you assume that null hypothesis is true does not it does not depend on any other parameter than the value n or in case of z it does not depend even in the size of the sample. Something I have not shown here but we also went through a testing of hypothesis process for testing that the, sam, uh, the population variance is equal to a given value sigma 0 square. And we found that chi square that is n minus 1 sample variance divided by the sigma naught square is a chi square variate and that variate if we call it w then uh, or we have called it y probably that is the variate which is a test statistic it becomes a chi square distribution with n minus 1 degree of freedom. So, it does not have any other parameter only parameter is a known uh, value depending on the sample size. And again we tested the three alternatives and we found three critical regions in which we can reject the hypothesis when we assume that null hypothesis is true. Okay. So, then comes what we want to do now. As I said before, we already made an assumption that the underlying population distribution is normal. But that may not be always the case. And as it was mentioned earlier also that in the material science and uh, metallurgical engineering number of times the data do not follow a nice symmetric distribution like normal. And we cannot really apply central, central limit theorem because the data size is not sufficiently large. So, in this presentation today, in this session today, we would like to derive a test statistic to test the hypothesis, the same two hypothesis that the population mean is equal to a given value versus its three alternatives and population variance is equal to given value versus its three alternative. But the underlying population distribution will not be assumed to be normal. In this case as a case we have assumed it to be viable distribution. We had mentioned it earlier, you just observe the test statistic that we found in testing the hypothesis that mu is equal to mu 0 when sigma square or the population variance is known is z which depends only on x bar and rest of them are known parameters. If you say sigma square is unknown 
then sigma square gets replaced by the sample variance. So, T statistic is depends on x bar and s and otherwise mu uh, mu 0 and n which are all the known quantity. This x bar and s are very special stat, uh, statistics because expected value of x bar is always mu and variance of x bar is always sigma square over n no matter what the underlying population distribution. Also if you look at it the expected value of s square is also sigma square independent of what distribution underlying distribution is it need not be normal. So, this actually indicates that uh, the same z and t can well be used as test, test, test statistics to test the same hypothesis mu is equal to mu 0 when sigma square is known and mu is equal to mu 0 when sigma square is unknown and we can follow the practice only thing is assumption of normality makes life easy because the distributional aspect of the test statistics z and t become very obvious one is a standard normal uh, distribution and the other is a t distribution with n minus 1 degree of freedom which may not be the case when you deviate from the assumption of normality. But well in that case with the advent of computers and so much of computing facility and software there always should be possible to find a numeric solution through either the numerical analysis or through Monte Carlo simulation and that is exactly what we are going to demonstrate or rather show it here. So, uh, let us consider a case that we want to test the hypothesis mu is equal to mu 0 under viable distribution. So, here I have given you a, a, a situation in which such a problem can arise. Suppose there is an indigenous engine component and this component is now need to be replaced where we uh, earlier the manufacturer was using an imported component. Now the developers of the indigenous component has to show that its performance or the performance criteria that the imported component meets is are also met by the indigenous component. And suppose the criteria is matching the low cycle fatigue life. LCF life is the property we would like to compare. So, assume that we have a data sample data from the indigenous component x1, x2, x3, xn and uh, we would like to from this data we would like to show that the mean LCF value and the standard deviation of LCF value from this sample is same as what you would get from the imported component. Remember it is one can show that LCF uh, values can follow closely Weibull distribution. So, let us set up the problem. We want to test if LCF of indigenous component is same as that of an imported component. So, for comparison we have two pieces of information. We have an LCF data x1, x2, x3, xn which is a random sample of size n and we have a mean value of imported component mu0 and a standard deviation of imported compo component sigma0. Let mu denote the mean value of LCF of indigenous component and sigma denote the standard deviation of the indigenous component. Then in the present case we would like to test the hypothesis that mu is equal to mu 0 where the population distribution is viable. In reality we have to assume three parameter viable distribution. Uh, in the case of special random variable we have given a very brief introduction to three parameter Weibull distribution. So, we will revisit it here. 
the probability density function of free parameter viable distribution is given in this format, where psi is called the location parameter, beta is called the scale parameter and c is called the shape parameter. Now let us take a transformed variable w which is equal to x minus psi over beta then it turns out to be that is also a viable distribution with location parameter 0, scale parameter 1 and a shape parameter c. So, it means that uh, this is this depends only now on one parameter which is called c, it is a shape parameter. This is also called a standard viable distribution. Remember standard normal distribution does not depend on any parameter. Standard viable distribution depends on one parameter which is a shape parameter. The mean of standard viable distribution mu w mu sub w can be given as a gamma function of 1 over c plus 1. Now, if we transform the, the variable, the viable variable into w, then x can be written as psi plus beta plus w and therefore expected value of x is expected is psi plus beta times expected value of w and therefore it is psi plus beta m sub w and similarly the variance of uh, the 3 parameter distribution viable distribution x variance of x is equal to sigma square can be written as beta square sigma sub w whole square. Let x1, x2, xn be a random sample with viable psi, beta and c. Then w1, w2, wn becomes a random sample from a viable distribution with 0, 1 and c. And x bar is nothing but psi plus b beta w bar and s square is beta square s w square. Let us define viable t statistic that is our uh, t statistic that we already know x bar minus mu divided by s over square root n and which can be written as uh, square root n w minus mu w divided by s w and this I call it a t but it will not follow the st student's t distribution whatever it may follow I call it a viable t distribution and I call this a viable t statistic. t is called a viable t statistics and unlike t distribution viable t statistic also depends on one parameter unknown parameter c which is the shape of viable distribution. So, it depends on of course the degrees of freedom should be n minus 1 and uh, because we have uh, estimated x bar, so it the degrees of freedom will be n minus 1, but it will also have another parameter along with it which is c. Now we consider the testing of hypothesis mu is equal to mu 0 against the 3 uh, alternatives h1, uh, sorry it should be h1, h2, h3, but uh, there is a mistake here. Let us correct it so that the mistake does not continue. So, it is uh, h1, h2 and h3. So, it is mu is not equal to mu 0, mu is greater than mu 0 and mu less than mu 0. We straight away assume that sigma square is unknown. Then the t statistic as defined above can be a t a statistic for testing the hypothesis that mu is equal to mu naught. Let us define what will be the critical region. You recall what we did in the past and we follow the same steps. So, if we fix the alpha error the type 1 error at alpha then for the 
testing the null hypothesis against the three alternatives. The first alternative reject H0, reject H0 if absolute value of T is greater than I call it T Weibull 1 minus alpha by 2 with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and of course there will be a parameter I am sorry of course there will be a parameter C which I have missed out. So, this is going to be your critical value the alpha 1 minus alpha by 2 comes under the same argument we are assuming that it is going to be symmetric. If it is not symmetric then it has to have the, the two value I think it is uh, it would be more appropriate if we write it that this can be written as T less than T w 1 min uh, sorry alpha by 2 n minus 1 c or T is greater than T sub w 1 minus alpha by 2 n minus 1 c. This is the correct way this needs to be corrected this has to be either this or that. Then if we consider the rejection I mean the alternate hypothesis as mu is equal to mu 0 then we say that reject H 0 if T is greater than T w 1 minus alpha n minus 1 C and if we take the alternate that mu is equal to is less than mu 0 then we have to say reject H 0 if T is less than T w alpha n minus 1 C please make sure that this correction is made this is the full correction this is incorrect it has to be this T has to be less than T w alpha by 2 n minus 1 or T has to be greater than. So, in other words like a chi square distribution we are assuming that this distribution will also be kind of a asymmetric distribution and then we are taking two values this is T alpha by 2 and this is T 1 minus alpha by 2 uh, with the rest of the parameters. So, there is n minus 1 and C here also there is n minus 1 and C this is the case with respect to this. <clears throat> so, if you are looking for uh, this situation then you are going to look into this area to be alpha and therefore, this value is going to be T 1 minus alpha n minus 1 c and if you are looking for the fourth case if you are looking for this fourth case then you will have to take some value here where this value this area is going to be alpha and therefore this is going to be t sub w alpha n minus 1 and c. I hope this is clear. So, these are going to be the critical region. So, how do we find any critical value and again I have to add a c here. I have to add a c here because it is actually a uh, so, this should be written as T sub w alpha n minus 1 and c. <coughs> so, this 
So, it is a viable T distribution depends on degrees of freedom n minus 1 and shape parameter of a viable distribution C. Therefore, viable T distribution does not have any closed form solution. The way we have defined it, it does not have a closed form solution. Hence, the critical values of viable T are generally simulated. We will give you the here how to simulate it. So, this Monte Carlo simulation can be carried out that first you take mu 0 because that is already given to you. The next is you convert this C0 is equal to 1 over gamma inverse mu 0, gamma inverse is the inverse gamma function mu 0 minus 1. You remember why we are doing this because mu 0 is actually defined as gamma of 1 over C0 plus 1, please recall. So, if you take the inverse function and any uh, mathematical programming language will have an access how to find a gamma inverse function. So, you can as well use this. Then you generate capital M number of samples of size small n, capital M number of samples of size n, M is typically uh, 5000, 10,000 lakh I mean depending on computer capability and the random generators capability, you can decide what should be the size of M. So, uh, you generate this M number of samples of size small n from viable 0 that is standard viable distribution with a C0 which you have already calculated in the previous step. With that you generate the viable random variables. This is your sample, so you call it Wji, i runs from 1 to n, it represents the sample and j represents the number of simulations, these j are m populations and therefore you have j is equal to 1 to m Wj bar and Swj square. You calculate the viable T statistic using this formula. Once you have M, capital M of Tj, you sort them out from smallest to the largest and if you take 1 minus alpha time nth value of Tj, that will be the alpha level critical value of viable T distribution depending on C0. So, what you really need to do is for different values of C0, you have to simulate this or as and when needed, you take what is your M0, you convert it into your C0 and write a nice program so that every time it generates this critical value and gives you. Please remember when we do Monte Carlo simulation, it is very important to see the stability of it, make sure that the seed that is given into it does not conflict with your Monte Carlo simulation process. Uh, <coughs> if suppose now we want to test sigma square is equal to sigma naught square, okay. Well, under normal population if you want to test, our test statistics W is n minus 1 s square over sigma 0 square, which is a chi square n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Just as in the previous case of testing mu is equal to mu 0, we find rather we observe that expected value of s square is sigma naught square or sigma square independent of what is underlying population. Hence, W can also, also be a test statistic for the present case and when population under concern is viable, such a statistic is called a viable chi-square statistics and the distribution is called viable chi-square distribution. Again you can find the critical region, here also please remember the statistic will depend on C, so let me write it down everywhere. So we will have this with C, here also there will be a C. 
So, if you are taking a null hypothesis sigma 0 square is equal to sigma square is equal to sigma 0 square and your alternate is sigma square is not equal to sigma 0 square. Then your test is divided in two region. Reject null hypothesis if your test statistic w is smaller than chi square w that is Weibull chi square with alpha by 2 n minus 1 degrees of freedom and a parameter c. By the way this parameter such a parameter c is generally called a nuisance parameter or w is greater than chi square w square that is uh, the Weibull chi square at probability 1 minus alpha by 2 with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and nuisance parameter c. If your alternate is sigma square is greater than sigma 0 square then we say that reject at 0 if chi your statistics w is greater than the Weibull chi square with probability 1 minus alpha n minus 1 degrees of freedom and nuisance parameter c and if sigma square is less than sigma 0 square is your alternative then the critical value is Weibull chi square at alpha probability n minus 1 degrees of freedom and nuisance parameter c. How do you find the critical values of uh, Weibull chi square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and nuisance parameter c? Well, we have to take the same steps as given to simulate the critical values. Instead of calculating a test statistic which is test statistic which is tj you calculate wj and sort wj from smallest to the largest and take 1 minus alpha times mth value which will give you Weibull chi square critical value. Please remember here the value given is sigma naught square so there will be a slight change in the beginning you will take sigma naught square and from that you will calculate there is uh, you have to find out the formula for sigma naught square which is given earlier and then you have to calculate the value of uh, C naught and then do the simulation. So, let us summarize it. We defined the testing of hypothesis process for testing mu is equal to mu 0 and sigma square is equal to sigma naught square under non-normal distribution in particular we took the case of Weibull. We did this because we found that the test statistic z and t which we have chosen under normal population their properties of choosing them for statistic is independent of what is the underlying population. So, we decided that the same statistic can also be useful. We felt that it can also be useful to test the hypothesis under different population distribution. We did that with the Weibull distribution. We found Weibull t and Weibull chi square statistic. We found the critical region and we gave the steps through Monte Carlo simulation to simulate the critical values. Please remember there is nothing holy about Weibull. This is just a case has been given to you because when you say that distribution is not normal there are too many probability possibilities come up. So, we have shown you one possibility you can change it and see how the test procedure can develop as and when the need arises. Thank you.